Hi folks. Okay, I want to do a video, short video on answering some questions we've been getting about the cedar fencing material that we use. As you know, uh, as we've announced several times, we use this cedar fencing that we either get at Lowe's or Home Depot or, or uh, several different places like that. And I want to go over several aspects of it that we probably haven't touched on before. Number one is how do you pick out a board? How do you know what you're going to make signs out of? I want to show you some do's and don'ts. I've got a board here that I'm not sure exactly how it'll show up on the camera, but this would be a don't. <laughs> do not pick a board like this for obvious reasons unless you're making a rocking chair or you're building an ark. But for making signs, you might have some uh, issues. Um, another issue with it is you can see there's knots all the way through this board pretty much uh, the whole way there's knots that you're going to have a tough time with and it's got a split in it so this is kind of like a trifecta of a board you do not want to pick so let me show you what I go by when I pick out boards this would be a board that I would pick out that I would make signs out of the number one criteria I go by is when I'm making either this board or this board, I need a good two foot section. And that I either get 30 or 30 or uh, between 30 and 40 dollars for those boards. Well, I know that by looking at this board, number one, it doesn't have any cups to it. It's pretty straight uh, this way and actually this way. It's pretty straight. So that's the first thing I do. Then I look for splits, uh, either down through the board or from the end of the board. So I look it over pretty well there. So those are the first two criteria. The next criteria is, can I get a two foot board out of it? If I can get a, two, uh, a six by 24 board out of that, I know worst case scenario, I'm paying two bucks for something I'm getting 35 or 40 for if the rest of the board is scrap or firewood I'm still doing pretty well but on this particular board you can see I got a couple knots I might get something out of here I might not I might get one of my little ribbon boards out of there maybe it looks like I probably would so that's a $12 sign for me and then I come down and I know I can get uh, a two foot board out of there and then beyond that, and that's, that's in front of that knot, cutting that knot out, then I know I can get uh, probably uh, one of my small or medium ribbon signs out of there. So that's, you know, 35 or 40 bucks for that, 15 for that, 12 for that, and if I got to throw the rest of this board away, I'm still way money ahead. So that's kind of how I go about that. Now, every once in a while, you'll run across a board like this. This is, oh, other than that, there's a little split there, but what I can do with that is I can either cut, I can cut uh, some of my 1x4s out of it, or I can get a ribbon-shaped board out of it. I'm kind of making a mess here. But see, I can still get a ribbon-shaped board out of it from there. Uh, but there's no knots, uh, pretty much no splits as far as I can see right here. It's nice and straight both this way and that way, no cupping. Um, that pretty much I can make a hundred bucks out of that board um, a hundred at least a hundred bucks out of that board not bad for a two dollar investment so that's one of the things that I wanted to go over um, I think that we'll move on to a second segment that I want to talk about another issue that we're having with this uh, cedar or, or what you guys are and maybe I can help you out there too okay the next thing guys that we I'm getting a lot of questions on is the thickness of the material. This cedar fencing probably will average out, at least in our area, it might be different where you're at, but in our area it's somewhere around 5 eighths, some uh, give or take a little bit here and there. And what I'm getting questions on is, is that too thin once you surface it down on both sides and then you sanding it, is that too thin? Uh, well, what I found is I had some concerns about that too. What I found is no, it's not. Um, you know, when somebody's getting a sign that looks like this and you hand this to the customer, the fact that it's not full three quarters of an inch thick, they really don't care, honestly. And as far as strength of the board, that's not an issue. So it's not an issue really, the thickness. 
Now, you know, you can do what you want, but for me, when I'm handing this to a customer, the fact that it's only, you know, a little over a half inch thick or, or somewhere around there just is not an issue. So, um, but there's one thing that you can do that will help a little bit when you're surfacing. If you, I'll show you all of these boards that I have here. Let me set that aside. What I do when I'm picking out my board, oh, let me bring that back. When I'm picking out my board, and or when I'm getting ready to prepare it after I brought it back to the shop, I, I find what side I'm going to use for my surface. So let's say on this particular board, I'd probably use this as my surface. So when I go to cut my boards, I cut them to length or cut them to shape, I get that done. Then I surface the, the individual boards after that. And what I'll do is I will surface the front side of the board. This is the front of my board, but I don't surface the back of it. There's no reason to surface the back of it until I get the sign all carved, all done. Then I'm going to cross grain sand like I do. I cross grain sand, put my stamp on there. That will save you a little thickness. So you don't necessarily have to surface both sides of the board before you start making your sign. So what I do, again, and that will save you a little bit on surfacing. So all of my boards here, you can see they're all you know, rough on the back, just like I got them from, from Lowe's. Those won't hit any surfacing on there until the sign is already carved, ready to go. Then I'll cross grain, uh, sand the back of it, put the stamp on, and boom, it's done. That will save you a little bit of thickness in the long run when you on your finished product, rather than surfacing both uh, side, front and back before you even start your sign. So now we'll move on to the next aspect of uh, questions we're getting on the cedar. Okay guys, the third segment I wanted to do on here is talking about the moisture in the boards. Now we're in Arizona. It's fairly dry here. We don't have a lot of moisture except during monsoon season, but that's just a short part of the year. A lot of you guys are back east or the Midwest where you guys have a lot of moisture in the air. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of experience with with how you deal with that, I have some suggestions that I have for several, um, several people that have called me and I've given them kind of suggestions. But first of all, watch that number, our number 48 video where I put, uh, where I'm drying the, the cedar. Because when you get this stuff from Lowe's or Home Depot, it might be at 20, 22, 25% moisture. And like you, like, I know you guys know this, but uh, and not to be redundant, but I like it around 6% or less uh, before I make a sign out of it. So that's where number 48 video really comes into play, shows you how to dry it. But once it's dry, what you want to make sure is you don't want to let your boards sit around without having weight on them. I put them up on stickers, what we call stickers, like on number 48. Keep that weight on there until you use those boards because if you dry them and then you set them out, even out here, um, and I don't have weight on them, I don't have keep them perfectly flat with weight, they'll suck up moisture out of the air and they'll turn into that rocker one I showed you a minute ago. So keep your weight on your boards uh, until... I, well, we kind of lost power there. Our batteries went dead. So um, just to reiterate, uh, to make sure that... Once you've got your boards and you've got them dry, don't automatically assume that they're not going to soak up moisture in the air, especially if you're in a climate that tends to have a lot of moisture. Now, I know I've talked to several of our students that are in the Midwest, down in the South, back East, that you've got a lot of moisture in the air on, on a regular basis. So what these guys are doing, and it seems to have worked, is like my drying cabinet that I have for drying my boards once I put a finish on, you might cut your boards, once your boards, your, your six foot boards are flat and dry, you might go ahead and cut them into shapes, uh, to the shapes that you want, two foot pieces or whatever, and then somehow keep them in, in a dry box. Now what I use is an old refrigerator that I gut it out and that's my literally my drying cabinet. In the winter time when it's cold here I put a little light in there and it keeps it nice and warm depending on what temperature you're at, where you're at, but if you keep them in that fridge that might keep them from sucking up moisture out of the air. Now once you start making a sign out of it get it done, get a finish on it as soon as you possibly can and once you do that, you should be okay. Again, I don't have a lot of 
personal experience on this simply because I've never lived in a climate and made signs in a climate that has high moisture content. Um, where, where it's moist all the time. Florida, Georgia, I know Steve McCullough down in, in, uh, in Georgia, he deals with this a little bit, and a lot of you guys do. So, I, again, you know, I can use some feedback from you guys. If you guys find a way to keep your boards from cupping and warping and all that and keep your moisture content down, again, my suggestion would be find a way to keep them dry in a sealed container like a refrigerator or some kind of a box or something like that that's pretty much airtight once you've got them dry and flat and cut them to size. Um, what else did I need to talk about, Dad? Was there something I'm forgetting here? No, I, you've like... got the moisture meter there. Did you want to show them? Yeah, this is a moisture meter we use. And again, you'll see this on, on uh, number 48 video and maybe even one or two other videos where we've used it. So uh, just, you know, it get it down to 6% or less, and I think you'll be good. I had some notes here. No, I guess that's that's about it. That's all we really needed to say on this particular video. Uh, I just wanted to uh, address some of those concerns. So we'll uh, we'll see you down the road. And thanks for watching.